following me? Do I have to scream? Though it, it's always sort of followed the same sort of survival horror genre structure, the Silent Hill series has been able to differentiate itself from games like Resident Evil simply because it takes a different approach to how it does certain things. Uh, there's much more emphasis on sort of the visual, sort of uh, disfigured scares, like you see the crazy enemy designs and the fog and all that. We recently had a chance to check out the Silent Hill 3 playable demo, which only contains, you know, maybe about half an hour of the game, but it gives a good idea of what you can expect from the full version of the game. Basically, it starts off with the main character, Heather, going through this amusement park, which is just, uh, it's deserted. There's a bunch of, you know, guys in pink bunny mascot outfits with blood drenched all over them. Uh, you get the traditional Silent Hill fog blowing over the area, and you get the, the really cool grainy film effect. It really sets the tone for the beginning of the game. I mean, you're entering this area that essentially looks deserted. It's all dark. Uh, the only thing Heather has uh, initially in her inventory is a small little flashlight that she can use to light up areas that are dark, which is basically the whole environment. Uh, she also has a knife, but this can re be replaced by going to the inventory. She also has a gun and uh, an automatic weapon. As you start progressing through the, the demo, you kind of explore this environment. You find out that you know, all these people around are dead. Uh, you see some really strange sort of objects locked in these cages. And as you get later in the level, you start to see some of the crazy creatures that the Silent Hill series is known for. You see this sort of bandaged dog that has its face split in two, and when it bites, it sort of just opens and closes like that. Uh, you also get kind of the, these weird, huge, mummy-like creatures that uh, can punch Heather around. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to run by these enemies, but you know, if you do get in confrontation with them, you can either take care of them with a the gun or uh, Heather's knife. Uh, either way, when they fall to the ground, it doesn't automatically mean that these enemies are dead. Sometimes you'll have to walk up to them and smash them over the head with a pipe or just kind of stomp on them to make sure that they don't get back up. Shortly after that, she wakes up and she's in a brightly lit diner. That's an obvious contrast in the environment that she was in before. Uh, as she's walking out of the diner, this old man starts to follow her. After a brief conversation, she gets kind of freaked out, so she walks into the bathroom, climbs out a window, and she goes into this alley that's blocked off. So eventually she has to go back into this huge structure, which is basically like a mall. But once she gets back inside, she sees these creatures that were in her dream. So obviously there's some sort of craziness going on there. Once you kind of explore this mall area, you'll get a little taste of what Silent Hill is all about. Uh, Heather will only be equipped with the knife initially, and then you, as you progress, you find a gun and then uh, other items later on. You also encounter one of the first puzzles, which involves getting a key that is just barely out of her reach. The development team at Konami Computer Entertainment Japan uh, totally redid the graphics engine for this game. The character models are really impressive, uh, especially Heather. You can see all sorts of little details on her face, even down to just like little freckles. Um, the environments are pretty cool looking. Obviously in the first one it's a little bit, uh, a little bit better looking just because you have the fog and you have the grainy film effect and it's just a little bit generally more artistic looking than say the diner which is obviously something that's more based on reality and isn't quite as spooky as uh, the amusement park. In some of the later levels in the game um, you'll start to see some, of really, some really cool special effects. There's one where uh, the development team is able to make it so that textures on the walls actually start moving so it'll provide an effect that makes it seem like the walls are actually bleeding, things like that. It's, it, they've really worked hard to improve the visual aspects of the game. The sound is also, you know, pretty much what you've come to expect from the Silent Hill series. You get sort of the crazy grunts and groans from the creatures that you encounter. Uh, the music really serves to kind of heighten the tension in the game. Konami even went so far as to develop their own sort of surround sound system uh, for the game. So if you have that ability, it should really add to the overall effect of the game. So from what we've seen so far, it appears Konami's on track to really have a game that holds true to the Silent Hill series, all the while improving the key elements that made it so entertaining to begin with. Uh, we'll have more on the game in the coming months.
nightmare. <laughs>